So I've used the word control points a lot. Uh, this is a term that we use for a input to the hardware that is used to specify a specific pathway through the data. It controls part of the hardware and says what the hardware does. Uh, the MIPS machine that we've built so far, this is the same MIPS machine that we've built, has a collection of control points, whoops, a collection of control points that we've already discussed. And for any given instruction, we need to now set the value of those control points such that the multiplexers will choose the appropriate data paths and the functionality will be appropriate. So the control points that we have now, first of all, in the branch hardware that we just built in the previous video, we've got BR type, which is two bits, and we've got PC source, which is two bits. And then in the rest of the hardware, all listed at the bottom here, we've got all of these different control points. We've got the opcode and function that are inputs to the control logic. That's going to use to specify the destination register RD multiplexer, whether or not the register file is writing, the ALU source multiplexer, the re uh, destination register file source multiplexer, the ALU function, and the data memory, whether it's reading or writing. The flags are also inputs to the control logic that'll tell us some things about what we want to do. Then in general, what we want to do now is sort of list out and specify the value of each of these control points for the different instructions that we want to create, uh, and then find some way to create the hardware that will go from an opcode and or a function code into this list of control points that we have. So first thing we want to do is list all of our control points and just sort of notate what their values could be. Uh, they're, they're written in sort of a, a shorthand, but in, on the uh, hardware itself, they're abbreviated quite uh, <laughs> to a couple of letters. So it's important to know what those letters mean. And on any sort of exam, I will give you what those letters mean. I'll give you a picture that looks just like this, um, which will have the control points uh, and their and their functionality. So the control point for BR is the first, and they're just listed from left to right uh, on the hardware itself like this. So the first one listed from left to right is the branch type BR, and then the PC source PS, register destination, register write, the ones we just listed, right? Register source, ALUB source, ALU function, data memory read and data memory write. Those are the control points that we have, and these are their values for certain instructions, right? So each, in, each uh, instruction is listed here, and we say what they do, uh, and then we can say what their values are. So the RD is 0 if we're selecting RT as the destination register. It's 1 if we're selecting RD as the destination register. And it's 2 if we're selecting 31 for the destination register, strictly for the jump and link instructions. Then RW is whether or not to write to the destination register. The only time we don't write to a destination register is if we're doing a store instruction or a branch instruction. In all other cases, the result of the uh, instruction is stored in a register file. So it's 0 for no and 1 for yes. ALU source is going to be 0 for RT and 1 for an immediate value. ALU function, there's a few of them, and we'll give you a list of those. In fact, on the sheet that I would give you on the exam, the ALU functions are listed here. Add, subtract, load up or immediate set, and or exclusive or and nor. So it's a three bit ALU in this case for those different values. <clears throat> Some of these are different from the ALU that we built in class, uh, but I think you can probably imagine what LUI would do, what set would do. Uh, you're going to take two numbers, compare them, and set some register uh, and output a one if the answer is true and a zero if the answer is false. Then we've got data register, uh, data memory read and write, which are obvious. Uh, we've got the register in source, um, which is going to be a zero for coming from memory, a one for coming from the ALU, and two if it's PC plus four, again, just for the jump and link. Then branch types are the different type of branch comparisons. Zero, zero is going to be no branch. And again, this is going to be for most instructions. <clears throat> then zero, one for branch if equal, and one, zero for branch if not equal. Uh, they're there. And then the PC source, again, four options. Zero, zero for branch, also for regular instructions. Zero, one for jump target. Uh, one, zero for register source, RS. And one, one for syscalls. So now the question is, how are we going to get from the opcodes of the instruction to these values? Right? Uh, every instruction is going to have an opcode. This is how we determine what instruction is used and how we decide what the rest of the hardware is going to do. Uh, sometimes the instruction is extended with, the op with a function code. This is only in cases where the opcode is zero. Uh, but you could 
add more instructions that have different function code extensions. And as we saw, there's a few other special types of instructions that are extended in different ways. The branch, um, the special extended branch instructions. Let's see if I can get my sheet out here. The extended branch instructions here uh, use the um, which is it? The RT field as an extension code to indicate what special kind of branch we're doing, uh, and the uh, a, the floating point functions, which we haven't looked at, use also a uh, the shift amount field uh, uses being used as an extension of the function code field. So in fact, there are um, is that right? The shift amount field or the extension field? There's a different field. Uh, we haven't talked about floating point numbers yet, uh, but there's uh, actually then almost half of the instruction is specifications of what the instruction should do, and then the other half are the opcodes, or operands, I should say. Okay, so the opcode plus any extensions are used as the input to some sort of a combination of logic circuit, which will then, as outputs, produce the values of the control points that will choose the multiplexer um, selections that will make the hardware do the thing. That's what we're going to do. The output of that circuit is the set of control point values, uh, and this is going to be a problem, actually, to build this because um, the, at the very minimum, you have six inputs, which is six bit op code, or sometimes 12 or sometimes 18 inputs <laughs> to specify what these control points should do. So we're not going to be able to build a K-map for this. We're going to have to do it in a slightly different way. And you've already done designs where you can't use K-maps. So this is the truth table. Uh, and again, I'm going to give this truth table to you um, on the exam. This is the truth table for all of the, um, for, for a small subset of the instructions that are in the MIPS, um, in the MIPS machine, right? The, the full set of instructions is quite a lot larger than this. Um, here's the full set of instructions, right? Uh, all of our add instructions, bitwise and shifts, sets, branches and jumps, loads, multiply and divide. So it's quite a large list and not everything is listed here. Right? We've only got a add, add immediate, and sub. We've got and, or, nor, exclusive, or. We've got set and set immediate. Branches, I think all the branches are there. Load word and store word. We don't have load byte or anything like that in here. And the syscall. So it's just a subset of the MIPS instruction set, but it's enough to do a complete uh, machine. And then um, one of the questions I might ask on an exam is, given this subset, uh, add to this set of instructions a new instruction that does a certain thing and then you have to tell me if the hardware in MIPS is sufficient and if it is what the control points should be what their values should be to make that instruction go and if it isn't what extra hardware you need to add to make the thing do the thing okay so this is the the truth table that indicates what values for each of these control points should be and you see some of these have don't cares right if we're doing a system call all we're doing is putting a new value into the program counter. We don't really care what R, D, A, S, A, F, uh, and the data registers are, because we're not interacting with the data at all. Um, we're not reading, we're not writing, and we're not writing to the register file. And that means that the other control points don't even matter, because we're not storing any information, so they can be whatever. Um, and there's a few other places where that happens. You can see in most cases, the branch type is zero. For branches, uh, it's either 0, 1, or 1, 0 for branch if equal or branch if not equal. And then 1, 1 is not used. And again, the PC source is usually 0 for PC plus 4 or PC plus branch amount. PC source is 1 for jumps. Where are we here? Um, 2 for jump register and 3 for syscalls. And then the ALU functions are the various different functions that are available here. Register write, again, I said, is 1 for most cases except for branches. Uh, and jump registers and uh, store word. Those are the only cases where we're not writing to our register. Um, and when we don't write to our register, most of the other things are don't care. Because if we're not writing a value, we don't really care what value is generated by the rest of the hardware because we're going to throw it away anyway. So now the question is, how do we take this plan, this design, and make hardware? Uh, well, it's actually not that complicated. All we have to do is sort of design it in the opposite direction. Instead of saying, take the inputs and design output for that. What we're going to do is we're going to say for each output, what input, what input sort of categories are going to provide that same output. And so, for example, we're going to say the ALU source should be one for immediate instructions and zero for all other instructions, right? The only time ALU source is one is when you're using an immediate format instruction. 
And so what we can do is make a sort of secondary signal that is true when the instruction is immediate and is false when the instruction is not immediate. Um, and in fact, what we can do is take all of the opcodes that give you immediate instructions and then build logic for that. That looks like this, right? And immediate, uh, add immediate, and immediate, or immediate, exclusive or immediate, set less than immediate, load up or immediate, load word and store word. These are all of the possible instructions which are uh, immediate format instructions. And then we're going to have, so those are going to create, those are going to be true when, when it's an immediate format instruction, and that is going to cause ALU source to be one. So now what we have, we need to make a, a separate sort of sub, in, sub instruction or sub logic for each one of these, and these we can build straight from the opcodes, right? The add immediate opcode is 001000. So we put a big gate that selects for this six bit min term, and that will cause this to be true, and that will cause this to be true, and that will cause the ALU source to select the immediate value. In all other cases, when none of these are true, the ALU source will select the register value, and that will be sufficient logic to make ALU source work. This is just an example, but this is the kind of logic design you would use to create the uh, logical functions for all of the control points that would give you the full functionality of this hardware. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build all of that hardware out. It's going to look like this. We're going to build a decoder first to generate a separate signal for each opcode. This is going to be big and complex, but it's going to give us a single bit signal for every opcode so that we don't have to actually do this min term, six bit min term every time. We know we're going to need all of these six bit min terms, so let's just generate them using a decoder. And we won't need all of them, but we'll generate them anyway. And then we'll create these sort of intermediate signals, these auxiliary signals that are going to establish instruction groups. So rather than just say that uh, this control point is equal to this, we can just say an intermediate signal called immediate instructions is equal to this logic, right? So we're going to have, so our, for example, the immediate group is all of these instructions that are immediate instructions. The arithmetic group are all of these instructions that are arithmetic instructions. The branch group are all the instructions that are branch instructions. And then if we look back at our table of control points, we can see that those were going to have some common features and some uncommon features. So we'll need some specifics, like branch EQ and branch not equal are the only instruction that generates BR01 or 10. So those will have to be specific. Everything else can be generalized, right? All of our arithmetic instructions have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then the ALU function is different, right? DR0, DW0. But those are all the same, and so we can use that to be generated from these, control, from these auxiliary signals. And then finally, we're going to build the control point values based on individual instructions combined with the intermediate auxiliary signals that we just built. So PC source, for example, is going to be one, <clears throat> where are we here? PC source, PS, is going to be one for J instructions and JAL instructions, right? So J instructions, JAL instructions, syscall instructions. Um, and then, oh, this isn't exactly right. It's close. I got to re remake this. This is a one bit for PC source. We need two bits for PC source. Here, ALU source works is one for immediate groups, load word instructions and store word instructions, and a zero for everything else. Register write is true when we are doing an arithmetic instruction or a logic instruction or a load up or immediate or a load word or a jump and link. And it's false in all other cases. Uh, just so you know, this, P this one is, is incorrect. Uh, so <laughs> make a note of that. Um, but there you go. So that's the idea of the creation of the logic for all of this um, hardware. And it looks sort of like this. It's basically two big decoders um, as the first step. We have an opcode decoder, which says, what is the opcode? And if the opcode uh, is uh, the six bits of opcode, say it's an add immediate, then we get this one that comes available. If it says it's a load up or immediate, we get this one. And all of the other ones are zero, because that's how a decoder works, right? If the opcode is zero, we have to pardon me, further specify using the function decoder. And this is going to be our sort of standard format whenever we have our opcode extended by some other feature. Uh, arithmetic instructions extend the opcode using the function code. 
floating point instructions, extended branch instructions, they also use a separate field in the instruction to extend the opcode, and that'll just be the same exact format, right? The function decoder now says, depending on the six bits of the function code, we might have a JR instruction or a syscall instruction or something like that. And that's going to be the sort of first step of figuring out which instruction is being executed. And then the rest of the, in, of the control logic can be generated using uh, the process that I showed you, these intermediate groups, the auxiliary groups, all of the different individual instructions. And then you just create logic for each individual control point based on which instructions require that control point to be one. All other instructions will require that control point to be zero and they can be not included in that list. And that will give you the functionality you want, All right? <clears throat> so that is the process in general. Uh, these are some questions that you might want to think about as you're developing this logic, uh, but that is the process in general for developing the control logic. And once that's done, that is all of the individual pieces for this hardware and it is a complete functioning computer.